Good morning, everybody. Today we are going to talk about a simple service pattern that you can utilize in your Laravel applications. So let's just jump right into it. Uh, we'll be building a simple blog post uh, controller. It, it will get some data and then it will create a blog post. That's all we are concerned about. So the first thing that we need to do is create the, the model with migration. And our table will simply have a title and it will have a body. Maybe let's also create, uh, I will use a string for simplicity. Normally I would use an enum and a tiny integer, but to make it simple, let's just use string. It will contain a source, so where the, the blog post originated from. So let's save this. And uh, this is all we need, to be honest. Um, here we will have a store method. We'll get a request. And all we need to do is uh, create a blog post. So it will have a title. You know what? Now that I think about this, uh, we'll actually create the enum for the, the source. So let's create an enums directory. And inside of it, we'll just create blog post source. And this will be an enum that maps to a string. Uh, we'll have the app. We'll also have an API. Okay. Uh, so now in our controller, the source will be mapped to blog posts source. What we also need to do is create a cast. So our source is actually mapped to that enum. And now we just need to return it. All right, so this is as simple as it gets. Now let's say that we have an API and I have already created the controller that also needs to create a blog post. We'll just paste it here. We'll have a different source, but the rest will be basically the same. Or you know what, maybe to make it even more complicated, maybe you could get something like Request get uh, payload that post that title, and this would be payload that post that uh, body to make it more interesting. So this is the the simplest solution that you can have. You just copy the codes and call it a day. Uh, now there is a couple of ways that this could be improved. First of all, there is you know this is obviously simple, but we don't want to duplicate the code, we want to reuse it. So in order to do this, you need to extract the shared logic. And I know this, this example is trivial, but it applies to all sorts of projects, right? And different scales. Here we could have a blog directory, and inside of it, we could create a blog post service. So this service will have a store method, and it needs to get some data. So for now, let's just pass string title, string content and blog post source like that. Now, obviously we can simply copy that, paste it to our service and make it return our, our blog post. So we'll get the title passed here, content passed here, and the blog post source passed here. And this is great because now what we can do, now what we could do is we could utilize this service in both of our controllers. So this is exactly what I'm going to do. I will create a new protected blog post service. And now I will simply remove this call and simply do this service store. Maybe let's just wait with removing that so we can copy the variables. And now just pass the, the stuff that we need. Okay, so now we have our API done. We also need to do it in our app controller. And obviously we need to change the blog post source to app and rename the variables from the request. Now this is a big improvement because we are not reusing the code. However, using this pattern, we can utilize more interesting 
things. So for example, an obvious improvement to our current approach would be to use form requests instead of using a request so we can add some validation. So let's do this. Let's make a request. In the app directory, let's call it blog post requests, and we'll create another one in the in the API directory. Oops, this one got created in a weird place. Wonder. Oh, yeah, this is pretty weird. Aver, but yeah, let's just copy, uh, move it over manually. Okay, so we have our API blog posts here. Uh, you know because. The API, the data is shaped in a different way. We just need to follow this standard. So we can do something like this. It's required. You know, maybe you can give it a max. And the body would also be required. And let's give it a max as well. Now the second request will be pretty much the same. Uh, the only difference is that it will be called title and content. So now let's adjust our controller. We can use the blog post request here from the app directory. And when we go to our API, we can also inject blog post requests from the API directory. So another improvement is uh, to change the get to validated. This way we are sure that uh, the data that we are getting from the requests has been run through the validator. So if we add a new one, you know, something like this, we are sure that this is not just user input that, that we have not validated. So this is an instant improvement and increases the security uh, by a lot. Let's replace it in both places. So now another improvement that we could do to this pattern is to utilize resources. And Laravel has them built in. Resources are basically transformators for your data. So they can be shaped in a specific way when you return it. This allows you to, for example, hide sens sensitive information. So let's use PHP Artisan make resource. Let's create one called uh, blog posts requests, and we'll create another one. Oh, I used the wrong slash. Uh, and the other one will be created in the API directory. Now let me just clean them up a bit. <coughs> okay. Okay, so now our resources have been created, we just need to utilize them in our controllers. And by default, uh, what they will do is um, they will return the, the same data from the model that we are using. So uh, this won't change the, our response at all. The only difference is the key. It won't be called post anymore, it will be called data. Uh, we can obviously customize that, but because we have never shipped our API, this is fine. So let's just use our blog posts resource. I called them requests, didn't I? Yeah, let's just rename them. Resource and resource. So let's use the one from the API. We just can we can just call the make methods on them and then pass our posts. Let's do the same here. So we'll simply return blog posts resource from the app directory, then call make and then pass our post. The return type won't be JSON response anymore, it will be blog post resource. And the same one should be changed here. Now, the biggest benefit of this is that if, for example, uh, we wanted to return less data in our API, we could simply do something like this, right? So we could only maybe return the ID and the title. Um, and then maybe the, the body. This would work fine. And in our app, maybe we want to return more data, right? So we could simply utilize this pattern again, and now maybe return the source as well. Now resources have a lot of helpful methods that, for example, allow you to conditionally have different uh, resources as well when they are loaded. So let's imagine that we have related posts. We could utilize blog posts resource a collection and then do something like this when loaded related posts this way whenever we call the with methods on them they will also attach some additional data if it's not loaded it won't execute any queries so this is pretty cool uh 
We are not going to explore this in this episode. I'm just showing you an example of how they could be utilized. So now that this is pretty cool. Uh, however, let's imagine that we are adding an update route. So let's add an update here to our API. You'd call an update method. We would uh, get the blog post. And we are not going to talk about authorization yet, but you could simply, you know, utilize gates in Laravel to authorize whether or not uh, the authenticated user has access to this blog post, but we are not even saving the user ID to our table, so it's not really important for our scenario. So, you know, maybe in the update method, you would just get the title and the body and return the data. Uh, we obviously need to change our service so it can also handle updates. So you get a blog post, then string uh, of title and string of content. And then we could simply do blog post updates. Uh, and because the update method returns a boolean, we can use a tab method that would return the updated blog post. Uh, and this will return a blog post. Okay, so this is cool. Now we can basically copy this thing to our other controller. And we just need to remove those and copy to return type. So now we can see the problem. Um, every time we do a store and update, we have to duplicate this information here. And we have to remember the keys on the request and stuff like that. It's not really ideal. Another problem is that as we get more data, we'll just need to, to add more calls here into our controller, which for big resources may be a problem. So there is a, another small thing that we could utilize to, to improve the solution. And this thing is called data transfer object. So data transfer objects uh, simply calls that they are a PHP class that contains some data. So let's create one for blog post DTO. And the goal of this class is to store some data. So we'll use the constructor promotion to declare the data that our blog post requires to be stored or updated. So in our case, this would be a title. Uh, this would be our content and our blog post source. Now, if you're using PHP 8.2, you could also add the read only to the entire class. However, uh, I'm not using it, so I have to add it manually to, to each property. The goal of read only is to make sure that no data is changed. So the way we could now utilize this DTO is we could change the declaration of our methods. So instead of accepting all of those data, data points separately, we could simply accept blog post DTO. And now we could defer to those values. And what's really cool is you can you get a full autocomplete from that. So you're sure that you never make a typo or anything like that. Maybe we should also change the source when it's updated. It's really optional, but uh, yeah, let's let's keep it like that. Okay. We need to adjust the way we call those methods. So uh, basically we would just pass a new blog post DTO that would get a title a body and a blog post source of API. The nice thing is that we can also use the named arguments. So we know uh, what data we are passing and where. This reads all better. And this is not the final iteration, by the way, it will make it much simpler. But for now, let's just paste it here and here. Uh, we'll have to comply with this contract in our blog post controller or inside our app as well. So 
So this is an improvement when it comes to type safety, because now we can like reuse this type if we were to create another, uh, I don't know, if we were to add a comment line that would be able to, to publish the blog post, uh, we could utilize this DTO and those services to, to pass the data around. Uh, there, there is one more improvement that we could do. Inside of our DTO, we could uh, create methods that would set it up on its own. So for example, uh, we could create a public static function called from app request that would get a blog post resource, a blog post request from the app directory. Let me just copy this. And we also need to create from API requests. Now I will implement this as app blog post request, and we'll import the API blog post request as API blog post request. Now this entire pattern in our app controller can be simplified to blog post DTO from app request request. Same goes for this one. Now in our API controller, we can just do this, but as you can see, we cannot pass our API request to app request. We need to use API request from API request because we'll get a type error. And the same goes here. This is the final solution. It's really simple to read. You have type safety. You can control what type of data is returned from the API. You have reusable logic. So if you were to make any changes in one place, for example, if you were to, to publish that blog post to Twitter after it, it has been published, you can do this now in one single place. And uh, you're sure that you'll never make a typo with TTOs because you, you get auto completions which is something that you don't have with, you know, requests, uh, with Laravel requests. So this is a nice, simple pattern that you can utilize to create services and make your app more type safe and secure. If you like this, please give me a like. And uh, if you have anything to say, please leave a comment. I'm excited to hear what you guys think about this. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next episode. Bye.